Well, let's get more on this now from Thomas Loeninger. He's executive director of Epicenter Works. That's a digital rights organization. And he joins us by Skype from Vienna. Uh, good to have you with us on the programme. Would you say in principle that these passports are a good idea? Thanks for having me. Um, so it's a very complicated question because ultimately, I think uh, when it comes to international travel, um, such a document already exists in the form of the WHO yellow immunization passport, the vaccination passport that has been around for decades, which is internationally recognized and very cheap to, um, to roll out. And certainly the EU wants to establish some form of digital program here. Um, but the, the main argument that we would like to introduce is that this is not just for the international travel. You can already see with the name, which is uh, the same as in Israel, that uh, it's, uh, certainly some member states will use the system to also open up society and, for example, give privileges to people that are vaccinated, that had the disease or that recently have been tested. Well, well that's going to happen anyway, you could argue, whether the government sanctions it or not. There's a, a well-known case of a, a plumbing chain in the UK that have refused to, to hire anyone unless they can prove they've been vaccinated. Um, in terms of, uh, so it's not necessarily a, a digital issue, it could also be a moral one, but one to, to which there is no answer to the question. You mentioned that WHO yellow passport. Do you think even reverting to that would work? Because you do have states that are, are refusing to accept uh, travellers who haven't been vaccinated with a specific vaccine. Of course, you're right. And uh, in international travel, we had those systems for many, many years. And you could even uh, increase the security of the yellow WHO vaccination passport with holographic stickers for the COVID-19 vaccinations. Those could, those could even have the name of the person engraved that has been vaccinated. So there are ways to build on a truly international system. But if we really want to do this digital, and I I can only speak to the privacy aspects of the systems. I think there's a wider debate to be had whether we have the medical evidence for such a system, whether it's ethically what we want as a society. But purely speaking from a privacy perspective, it is possible to roll out such a system without uh, many negative side effects for the privacy of people. Because it's not just the fact that it's you, you have your own health information in that system. Um, if we really use this for every restaurant, for every museum, for every hairdresser that you go to, then of course also the information about the movement of people could be collected uh, in the wrong architecture of that system. So, so do you think this is just a, a, a technical question for the European Union then to, uh, to be able to protect against uh, privacy breaches? Because at the end of the day, if you're asking people if they've had a vaccine, I mean, that's the, they're gonna ha that, that is a breach of privacy because you're giving up information about your health status. Uh, surely the, the, there's nothing really you can do to counteract that. So are you saying this is purely on the nuts and bolts of how the EU roll this out and put together the digital infrastructure? Or do you think the privacy question is one which should nix the entire thing? I think you have to strike a balance here. Um, ultimately, the, the EU had the experience last year of uh, being late to the party when it comes to contact tracing applications uh, because it was more Apple and Google that sets a standard than, than the European Union. And now they want to be early. Now they want to get it right. And the uh, current proposal that the EU has announced today is definitely going uh, in the right direction. It's better on privacy than the solutions we've just seen in Germany and in Austria. Um, but it's really about the details. And sadly, we have not seen the details today. Um, those are left for delegated acts from the European Commission. Um, right now, we've only seen a framework from the EU that's solely about the freedom of movement from people, and it's solely left to the member states on deciding how those vaccination or immunization passports are used in other parts of society. And uh, those uses will also need national legislation. OK, so lots of details still to be fine-tuned there. Uh, great to get your input. Thank you so much. Thomas Lohniger there, joining us from Vienna. Thank you.